Hey, what up? You're tuning in to Destiny Finn. Anyways, cue the intro. Today, we are going to be talking about the three main travel expenses. As you can probably hear, it is like sleeting outside right now. So <laughs> hopefully the audio won't be too bad. And I got my audio all hooked up to hopefully then mess with that in post editing, post production. But yeah, so top three main travel expenses. A lot of people I think have a misconception that traveling is expensive. Like that is probably the biggest phrase and question I hear after people find out what I do with my lifestyle and how I travel by plane, boondocking, by camper. Like I travel a lot of different methods. Um, and it's always like, wow, that's so cool. How do you afford it? And people are they're, they're like mind blown that I can afford to travel, especially in my early 20s. But traveling is truly not that expensive. Yes, you did hear that right. It's not expensive, but it can be, which is why I'm going to break down basically the three biggest costs when it comes to travel. One, you're traveling from point A to point B, your transportation. That is your biggest and first cost when it comes to travel. If you're traveling by plane, it is expensive because you need to pay for the ticket to get you from wherever you are to wherever you want to be point A to point B. If you're traveling by car or even by camper or motorhome or whatever form on land, you're going to have to pay for the gas. Especially right now in America, gas is kind of expensive in some states. And I remember last year when I was living out of my Jeep boondocking and whatnot, I was like, wow, I really love California, but I don't love paying $6 for a gallon of gas. So I had to change my travel plans because of that cost effectiveness. So yes, that is your first biggest cost when it comes to traveling is the transportation. But even that can be cheap if you're flexible. If you can afford to travel to places on off seasons, you can get tickets for relatively cheap. Now, if you're going to go to, let's say, Alaska peak season, you might end up paying $1,000 a ticket depending on where you're flying in from. But if you're going to go to Alaska on a off season when it's right before tourist season, right after tourist season ends, you can get tickets for sometimes only like $300, depending, like I said, on where you fly out of from. And of course, if you're flying from Seattle, it's going to be way cheaper than if you're flying from Detroit. But tickets don't always have to be expensive. And that's where you want to watch the market. And there are tips and tricks on how to get cheaper tickets, especially if you are flying by plane. Um, if you fly in on like, let's say a Monday or Tuesday, and then you fly out like on a Saturday, usually that's what I have found to be kind of the cheapest for my budget system on um, to buying tickets. That definitely helps the prices. Also with gas. I have an app called Gas Buddy. It is a beautiful, phenomenal app. And that's kind of what I've honestly used a lot of my travel time. Like when I travel by my Jeep and whatnot, or if I travel like in my camper, I use Gas Buddy to kind of find the more affordable gas prices as I travel through the states because that can save you quite a bit of cash when you start adding up how much change you're truly saving, especially if it's already like on your route. Now, if there's like gas 20 cents cheaper, but it's like 10 miles out of my way, I'm probably not going to do that just because by the time you get there, you're literally going to be spending that in the gas to get back on like your road. Second of all, if you're living a more van life nomadic lifestyle, like I said, the transportation can be cheaper and you can maybe make it also spread out because I noticed also, let's say I'm starting in Washington like I did last summer and I was working my way back east. I didn't have a set time frame that I had to be back east. And my initial thought was, okay, let's gun it over there instead of, oh, wow, I can take as much time as I want to make my way over there. And that's actually what I ended up doing. So I got to enjoy my route as I was getting from point A to point B and learning just to relax because sometimes I get way too high strung. Anyways, number two, Pew. cost of living. That is going to be your second biggest travel expense. 
but even that does not have to be expensive. As you know, I'm a nomad. I love to boondock. Boondocking, if you don't know what boondocking is, it's basically free camping. It's parts of national forests and national lands, and it sometimes it's even just rest stops and whatnot that you stay the night. But there is a lot of boondocking sites, especially on the western board area, like California, Montana, Idaho, Colorado, Utah, Nevada, like all those states, phenomenal places to find boondocking. Even South Dakota has quite a bit of boondocking, especially like in the Badlands, there are places to park. It just usually also means that there isn't usually um, bathrooms and there's usually not like running water and whatnot. It's literally just nature. But for a nomad, I love that. I don't like being around people always. I like getting away in nature because it helps me for my work. So that's free camping. So like I was saying a little bit ago in my video, when I was getting from Washington to the East Coast, I just finally learned to enjoy my time and I took my time. You know, I found some different spots in Montana and I was like, you know what, I'm parking camp here for two weeks. And I did. And I parked camp, I hung up my hammock and I was next to a lake and it was amazing. But yeah, if you look online, like free boondocking sites, you can t usually find quite a bit um, some of them will make you, like, make you pay 2 to $3. Other, it is, like, $12 and whatnot. But there are also a lot of free ones. But then every single boondocking site, especially if it's National Forest and whatnot, and BLM land, they usually sometimes will have signs posted on how long you can stay. Some allow you to stay only a night, some three nights, some up to two weeks, some up to a month. Um, and then if it's not busy, you can always talk to the rangers there, like, the one that I stayed at, it was a two-week one, and I talked to the rangers because it was after season, there was nobody there. I'm like, hey, can I stay an extra week? And they were like, yeah, sure. Um, so just kind of have, be a good integrity-filled person when doing that because they do sometimes get people that stay out there for six months because they're, like, homeless, and then they have to kick them out. Um, <laughs> but there are free places, if not hostels. Hostels are another great, cheaper, more cost-effective way to stay the night somewhere. That's also something I love because you meet other travelers and nomads and just traveling gypsy people. Like, it is the best place for the most amazing vibe. I love hostels. They are a gift. They're more usually seen um, overseas and whatnot and seen, like, there's Alaska, especially if you go up to, like, Fairbanks, there's Sven's Base Camp. Um, that's a hostel and whatnot. They have a girls dorm. They have a boys dorm. They have co-ed. They have your own private cabins. Love that place. Yes, it is a shout out. I love my friend Sven. He's a great guy. He also has a mushing business, Arctic Winter Adventures. Totally awesome if you want to go up there in the winter and go dog sledding. Check that out too. I also have a documentary about him right there if you want to click it and watch it. Anyways, I just wanted to shout out about that. But no, hostels, great thing. Um, when I was going up through California, or should I say down, because I started up top and I was working my way through Yosemite and Sequoia and all that, I did stop at a hostel because after a couple weeks, you start smelling kind of bad. And I just wanted a nice shower and a place to actually sleep in a bed for a night. And it was literally $12. I spent the night, continued on my way into Yosemite because near Yosemite, there isn't as many boondocking sites that I found, and so it was a little harder also, which is also why I was like, mm, I'm gonna stay at a hostel tonight. Um, but that is another great way. There are also work stay programs. Now that is more um, like the UK and European cultures than America, but there is definitely still um, work stay programs in America. Um, that's even like base camps. Like there are a lot of times that you can work at a hostel, work at a base camp for the summer and they stay there and they'll even pay you to stay there and work. And then you can explore the area by just working a couple hours every day, like for the week. You know, it's like a part-time job basically. So if you're traveling overseas, that is a great thing. You know, when I am looking towards to go to Italy in the future, I'm looking to go to Germany, I'm looking to go to France. I'm going to probably use that program because you stay with them. Some people, they want you to stay a minimum of a week, other people a month, and you do. You work, they feed you, they give you a bed, you get to explore the area, talk to the locals. Like, it's a great, more cost-effective way to stay rather than paying money every night to stay at a hotel. Because hotels can get a little pricey, and if that's not really why you're going over there, you want to go over more to actually live like the locals and not stay like a tourist, work-stay programs probably a better option for you. 
Um, and they have, there's hostile ones. You can work on farms. You can work on horse ranches. Like there is a bunch of different things. Sometimes you can even be a nanny. That's another option. Um, but there is a lot of different options to make that second cost category of travel go down for you. And even just traveling with friends is sometimes also a cheaper way if you're going to stay at a hotel. Because one hotel room on off seasons, probably still around $30 to $50. Um, but with a friend, then it's like $25. And with four friends, you know, like the cost keeps kind of going down. Another thing about traveling um, with cost of stay, if you're staying in an RV or a camper, you also have to think about your campsites. Yes, there are cheaper places. You stay at national, like the parklands, you stay at like the national forest campgrounds. That's going to be a lot cheaper than staying at like a KOA resort. But there are programs for RVers and van lifers that you can go and be a camp host at a campground. You can go work a couple hours a week, kind of like a hostel, and then you also get discounted kind of stay. Sometimes they let you stay for free and they'll even pay you. Sometimes it might only be four to eight bucks an hour. But if you already got your house and living costs covered, that 48 bucks is great for that extra just saving for then your next leg of the journey. So that's going to be your second cost when traveling. The first is transportation. The second is hotels. The third, I kind of group everything else. <laughs> And I say that because when I'm traveling, I group my food, I group my toiletries, I group my um, souvenirs, just all together, my experiences. Um, that's all just one thing for me. Because I do. I kind of buy bulk food. Um, I'll go into town like once a month when I go through and I have a Sam's Club card, which... I personally like, not everybody likes Sam's Club because you have to pay money, but there is parts of the year that you can get the membership for super cheap and they basically pay you to get their membership. And that also helps with gas because like when I'm traveling through um, places, gas might be like, um, when I was in South Dakota, gas was three seventy at Sam's Club, but it was already like 4 30 everywhere else. So I was saving a good 50 cents. Now that's not always the case, but Sam's Club can definitely help your gas bills when you're traveling cross country at times um even if it's just by 20 cents and if you're already going there i mean they're not cheapest for everything like food wise but for me i definitely just like buying a bunch of bananas for super cheap and then i have them to last me um so i have found that for me to personally work with like food and gas but you might find your own thing some people like costco i personally don't because there's more sam's clubs nationwide, I feel like, instead of Costco's, like, they're more easily found, I guess, if that makes sense, than a Costco. Like, you might have one Costco, but you might have two Sam's Clubs in the state kind of vibe. Food, I honestly, when I, like I said, like, when I travel, I buy food from the grocery store, and then I just, like, make all my own meals, but I also don't eat a lot. Like, when I travel, I'm more of, like, an intermittent fasting, but that's also just my lifestyle because it helps, like, my gut and my system and whatnot, and so I'm not eating out because that can be super expensive rather than just like packing your own food. Um, like for $20 for a meal can go a long way at the grocery store. I mean, inflation's kind of coming, but it can still go a long way when you're finding things and you're just making food last. But everybody has their own thing. But yeah, cost number three is everything else. So food, like I said, um, souvenirs. I, I'm not really one for buying souvenirs. I buy stickers. I put them on like the roof of my Jeep and then I take them down every like year to two years and I put wall art up in my camper now. So like I buy stickers because I don't really have a lot of room to buy souvenirs, but maybe if you're traveling, you want to buy a souvenir, you know, you want to buy a hat or you want to buy a shirt experiences. Um, you also have to think about that. Like, what do you want to do? Are you more of a free experience person? Like I am. I love hiking. I like finding the hidden spots to go on hiking trails and swimming holes and just nature. Like that's me. And then every now and then I like just walking through souvenir shops. Like that's also an experience for me, especially in the off season when there's no people. It's like, wow, this is really nice. I can look at all this stuff I will never buy. Um, but that's also something I enjoy. But if you're an experienced person that wants to go skydiving, ride in a hot air balloon, you want to go to brewery hops, you know, you want to follow the bourbon trail through Kentucky, you want to, if you want to do more experienced things that are going to be costly, you do need to think about that. 
because like I said, traveling can be as cheap as you want pretty much and it can also be as expensive as you want. So it really just depends on what is your reason for traveling. Like why do you want to go there? Do you want to go there to learn to surf? Do you want to go there just to relax by the beach? Or do you want to go there to try all their coffees and their beers and their wines? Like what do you want to do? What do you want to get out of it? Why are you traveling? So food, like I said, souvenirs, experiences, everything else. But yeah, that's honestly the only three main costs when it comes to travel. Past that, you don't have a lot you have to worry about. And it actually, like I said, can be pretty cheap, especially if you're flexible on times of year. For example, like if you're traveling over to Italy, if you go like March, April, and you can stay for like eight, nine months, you can then leave in October, November, right after wine season. Because come June, July, people start traveling over there. It's wine season come September and tickets are going to be more expensive to fly out. But if you can wait, then you're good. Same with like Ireland. If you want to fly out there early, like February, tickets are cheaper than if you fly out you know, St. Patrick's week to Dublin in March. But if you also know the dates, you can buy just your round trip ticket early in advance and it's still a lot cheaper than, oh, last minute, I wanna fly to Ireland. Now tickets are like 700 instead of 500. So you have to think about that. Like thinking ahead when traveling is a great thing. Yes, travel is also being spontaneous. There are times that I was planning to go to the coast of California and I cut that trip short. I was like, screw it. I'm going down to Sequoia instead. And then I'm making my way back to like the Utah area. Like I was flexible and travel is all about being flexible because as you know, life doesn't go as planned and neither does travel, but that's the beauty of travel. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe. It helps me as much as it helps you like this video and comment down below your best, most travel destination that you've been to or that you want to go to. Peace out, Girl Scouts.